Hello guys, this is Jimmy from Spin Retro. This video will cover how to get started on the Android side of Retro Pocket 2. So let's get started. Tip number one, how to enter the mouse mode. So right now, you're in a gamepad mode. To enter the mouse mode, simply hold down home for a few seconds. And now you're on the mouse mode. While you're on the mouse mode, click A to enter, click B to go back. Tip number two, how to go to the settings menu. You can find this icon, gear icon uh, in the app drawer, or you can pull down the notification bar all the way and look for this gear icon. So this is where you can set up Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and other system functionalities. Tip number three, how to navigate between the file system. This unit comes pre-installed with Mix and you can go to Root, scroll to find the folder named Storage and go to SD card one. And this is where you can find your external storage, which is the, uh, the TF card slot. You can also pull down this net notification bar and as you can see this detected my uh, SD card, Samsung SD card. Click here. And this is also another way to access the SD card. Another third party app that you can use to navigate between the file system is 7-Zipper. And I recommend this application because not only you can uh, navigate between the file system, you can copy paste your uh, files around and also unzip any 7z files and zip archives. Um, so I think this is useful to, to have. Tip number four, how to expand the SD card storage. So the original unit comes with the 32 gigabyte of storage. If you want to expand that, simply pull out the, the old SD card and copy all that content, put it in PC. And when you get the new SD card, put all the original content that's inside the SD card, put it inside your new SD card and put it right back in. Uh, just one more thing to add, make sure you don't delete any of the original content in the SD card because those include pre-installed ROMs and data key file that is used to access the Retro Pocket app and also Retro Pocket Market. So make sure you keep all those files inside the SD card. That's why you need to copy all the contents from the original card, move it over to the new card and put it right back in. Open up the app drawer, find the toolbox app, choose background process limit, pick no background processes. This will limit any of the background processes happening on your device. So this will help with emulation performance. Tip number five, which emulators to use? If you want to play GB, GBC, you can use RetroArch over here. If you want to play GBA, you have to use this RetroArch instead. So this GBA icon RetroArch comes with the device. This is an older version of RetroArch that runs the older GPSP core and it runs better on the, the older version of RetroArch. That's why they included this second icon. Um, other than that, most of the systems can be run on the regular RetroArch and you have NeoDroid, which is free, PPSPP for PlayStation Portable and you have Mame for Droid for arcade games Flycast for Dreamcast Mupin64 Plus FC to play the N64 titles and you have NES 9X EX Plus for NES titles. The emulators I just mentioned are free and they already come with the device. If you want to download extra emulators, these are some of the paid emulators that I recommend. First up, Drastic is a Nintendo DS emulator that you can get from Google Play Store. It's $5. I think it's worth every penny. Next is FPSE emulator. This is a PlayStation 1 emulator. You can get this over at Google Play Store uh, for about $4, I think it was $3.60 something cents. 
And you have gba.mu, gbc.mu, md.mu, nes.mu. If you are curious about how they perform, just check out my other videos. Open up the app, open this hamburger menu, go to profiles, select profiles, and click emulation profile. And this is where you can set the global profile for most of the games. So you can set this to Glide N64 dash fast and this configuration uh, emulation profile runs most of the games at full speed. So I recommend choosing this and if this doesn't work for some of the games, you can always change them per game. But I recommend using this as a global default. Tip number seven, for a drastic emulator, go to change options, go to video, and set high resolution 3D rendering to true. And this will use a HD quality texture and this doesn't hurt the frames, uh, fr frames per second that much. So I recommend turning this on. Next up is RetroArch. So when you first try to play the game on RetroArch, uh, you might be wondering how to exit the game. I recommend setting the system hotkey to a physical button. Find uh, the second menu. Find input, go to hotkeys, and find menu toggle. So click menu toggle, and then hold L trigger. And now you've set a menu toggle to be left trigger. I also put fast forward to be R trigger, so I can fast forward uh, through the game sometimes. So that's it for my beginner's guide on how to use the Retroid Pocket 2 over at Android system. If you have any other questions, leave it in the comments below. Leave like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.